is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Thank you. Beautifully done. The guest house. Okay. Uh, okay, let's start. What? Oh, no. So I sent the the question based on these the elements of conviction that talked about a lot of things. Talked about. that in the elements of conviction talks about how there are so many things that we accept uh, we take it for granted and we don't we don't check we just accept we don't check anything like the information from sometimes from science there, there are a lot of people nowadays that they send Facebook news or uh, let, uh, let's say uh, not Facebook news uh, social media news as a, as real news mm -hmm. and then we we have to tell them you know this is fake and they go like we're all oh, really it is fake so they don't even check they just accept anything Kardec is talking about this in the elements of conviction and and from there, I got this, not only that, it was talking about self-doubt, it was talking the lucidity of the spirits, it was talking about the spirits a little bit, the aspects of spiritism, the experimental parts of manifestation, the ethical philosophy, and all the other aspects. And that's why I decided. Go ahead. Well, it's funny because um, I actually I identified with something he was saying in there that when I came to Spiritism, um, I actually came to Spiritism for the philosophy, and I found the Spirits book, and I, you know, and I started opening it up and reading about table turnings and all this stuff, and I was like, this isn't what I'm looking for, you know, like I was looking for like the philosophy part of it. And he he talks a lot about that that a lot of people come here they just want to see the phenomena, you know, they just want to see like you know, physical manifestation or see somebody channeling, but then he's like, but he mentions that like the, the people that come just for the phenomena, you know, if they don't get it, then they're going to leave. If they get it, they'll disbelieve it. But then the other ones that come for the philosophy of it, you know, actually have the the true like intention in their hearts that they won't just desire to learn. And, and I mean, spiritism provides plenty of <laughs> opportunities for, for the philosophy. Um, and what does that mean to you? Well, it, it just like what I read too, like that um, I didn't have to have it proven to me by a medium or by a, by seeing some kind of you know phenomena. Just the proof was like in the philosophy in itself that it was. I I, I don't I don't want to say the word like uncontestable, but it was like it was good and, and um, it rang true with what was already in my heart. Um, that. That um, that I want to work, you know, and become a better person, and um, and study, and <laughs> and all these kind of like all these kind of things that we find in spiritism, um, that uh, um, just the, the the idea that 
we know that there is a life after this one um, that continues on that makes you look at things differently, that makes you, you know, you want to live your life differently, knowing that there's consequences. When you, if you think of, if you don't, you know, if the materialists believe that at the at death, it's just an eternal, you know, darkness. <laughs> you know, and so they say, well, like, well, live, live for today, and, and, you know, every man for himself. Uh, but for the, for the spiritualist who believes that there's a life after this one and, and that our actions have consequences, um, it, it changes the way you look at things and how you, how you, you know, how you live. Um, so that the manifestations of the spirits, like, I don't want to say they're not important, but they're, they're sort of like, because <laughs> I, I think he says there's two parts of spiritism. There's the, the manifestations and the phenomena, and then there's the philosophy. And you know, that not that not that the manifestations aren't important, but the philosophy is really where, like as as far as like a human being like on planet Earth, like I need that to <coughs> show me how to live. You know, that's what I made of it. My 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 reaction to it was pretty similar to uh, Steve's. Uh, the importance to me when I came. Uh, which it was a real verification philosophy, it was a real verification of what I already knew in my mm -hmm. heart to be mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. my, my being a spiritualist for forever. And um, what I really love about the thing though is that um, I was not particularly interested in the um, in the phenomenon. But I think the phenomena are really important as far as verifying it and <clears throat> so that you get rid of doubts. Mm. And my life is about getting rid of doubts. About it. I wake up every morning and I'm filled with doubt. You know, what happened to God? Where did he go? Where, where, where did the wizard go? He disappeared, you know, and, and I, I'm there in a funk until, <laughs> until I can dispel the doubts. So I write about techniques of getting rid of doubt. I write about it because I experience some mm. things that really work and I try to share it. Anyway, but the again, the philosophy was uh, very good. And every one of the spiritist meanings I get something out of. You know, it, it verifies it and uh, the, uh, it, it really strengthens me. Mm -hmm. The thing, one of the things that I found disturbing in this particular section was uh, when the uh, skeptic uh, asked if he can come to a meeting, and Christ says, no, you're not ready. He says, we don't want people there who uh, are going to disrupt the meeting. So, and I, I run into that too, you know, I'm meeting people and I'm uh, trying to tell them what I'm doing, and they're interested, you know, and uh, and I don't know if I should invite them, but I suppose a, a, an introductory would be fine, and they're just not going to come after that if they're not interested. But uh, how, how, how do you feel about that? About what I said? Well, I know uh, from the Spiritist magazine that he uh, used to invite people that were actually against Spiritism, that they were skeptics. He, I know that he was inviting other people outside of the movement because he didn't want to be blind in whatever he was doing so he wants the people that did not want to be there or didn't know his spiritism to point out but if you do this if you turn on the light it maybe is the weather maybe is the temperature or it and give him different ideas so he would get rid of all doubts just like you I know he was inviting people, and that's why he invited the skeptic and the critic to talk. So if he said no here, it doesn't mean that he was saying no to everyone that wanted to see, because he was inviting people. But he, was in, but he said no to the skeptic here. No to the skeptic. He actually, I thought he actually said, like, said first he said, like, we're not going to allow you to participate in our thing. But, but, but then he also said he would allow him to come to a couple of meetings. I thought he was, he said that he needed to prepare first because 
he just wanted to see the phenomena and and this um this posture of kardec we actually have in the spiritual center there are a lot of people that just want to come to see the phenomena and this mm, it has implications like for example we know that the spirits they are attracted by vibration what we feel and what we think and what we think creates feeling and create thoughts and if you call someone that it's not prepared or doesn't know what is going on in a mediumistic meeting it can disturb the mediumistic meeting there are a couple of people in a mediumistic meeting just to give the energetic support they don't do anything i mean uh, physically if you go there you see them like this but they are there actually steve can tell us his experience in john of god that he was he went to a room parallel to the works of john of god and they there they, they were a group of people just praying right they were just praying this is just to give support to the works that they were doing that night it is necessary because there are so many like influences and the uh, and the 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 way that we communicate with the spirits is by symptom it's by emotions so our emotions like a wave goes and then we will bring back something so if I, it, it is really easy to disturb in this type of planet in this type of environment that we are incarnated right now it is really easy to disturb a mediumistic meeting so because by their own participants so what they do they take care as much as they can so people are, are aware of that phenomena that we once thought that is out of line there if we are not exercising our awareness our concentration we can destroy the the the, the works or we can uh, uh mess up with the works there is a book on andre louise, andre louise i was going so to talk times, about like exactly he attends the meetings and he says okay there's a few incarnates here and they can say like one or two of them are sitting there and like the discarnates are actually like wrapping them in, in fluids to try mm -hmm. to just like mm -hmm. contain their like negative vibrations yeah, yeah. yeah. there is one book of andre louise i don't remember which one i guess no mechanisms of mediumship so I, I think so so they are they went to a spiritual center to help a um a group of uh, magnetizers and then before they start their their activities so this woman comes she's late and she's like oh i'm sorry i'm late and then when they start to their activities the the preparation for the 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 magnetism or the passes there was something going on with that lady that it could not got get a flood of or a flow of unified feelings and and to prepare for healing right and there was a because of one lady one lady was disrupting that the the symphony of that place and then andre louis said i don't understand why we just don't go there and remove that uh what she's feeling help her to get in tune again with the rest of the group and then the mentor of that activity said uh that is not possible tonight excuse me yeah i, I want to get clear right you say a woman walked into a spiritist meeting no she head. was part of the the magnetizing the group the magnetism but but she was a an incarnate spirit walk correct incarnate spirit yes. walk and, and she had been attracting uh, uh negative spirits no she was just late and she was kind of she was not feeling well okay and then they they the a spiritual crew were there to help the incarnates group say that again this 
the spiritual there was a spiritual group a, a group of spirits that were this this carnage this carnage make that clear will you be good sure, sure 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 to me this, that's very clear this is the one sitting in the sure, sure, sure. one sitting there there's the one sitting right there <laughs> The and the other one. <laughs> so the there was a group of the seats discarnates and a group of incarnates. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Sure. Thank you for telling me this. So the group of discarnates wanted to help them with the healing activity of the house. Yeah. But because of one person, they could not. And the Andrelis did not understand and said, but oh, wait a minute. Why don't we go there and remove that? this awkward feeling that she's feeling right now and she will feel okay again and we can work and the mentor said it is not going to be possible tonight now, the mentor discarnate mentor yes and the, uh, the mentor talking, is always you're discarnate about, you're talking about okay. andre luis is asking this question yes the chico is uh, chico's uh, yes the spirit that used to channel that, through that is channel yeah Okay. Mentor is always discarnate. Mentor is never incarnate. That I didn't know either. Okay, now you do. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, the mentor explained that before she gets there that night, she had a fight with her husband. It was an explosive fight that disturbed her aura. So much, the mentor said, it would last six months and it would have an effect on her cells. It would last six months? The effects? The effect of that explosive um, uh, discussion, argument, arguing that they had. Wow. Yes. So the, who, who is the mentor talking to? Andre Luis, because Andre Luis wanted to help, what wanted to fix her. Oh, so Andre Luis is is being channeled by uh, Chico Xavier. Yes, but not at that time. That time was just there to help that group. Okay, but this is Andre Luis's story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he's just it's telling the story. It's just um, telling one of the stories. Yeah. So, so the man there had said that this woman was going to yeah. be suffering for this for yeah. six months. Yes, that's. The reason why I'm telling you this is because we don't think, but our reactions, our lack of uh, meditation on our emotions uh, doesn't give us the this awareness, this look of the consequences in our spirit. And that's why the reason that it's it's very dangerous to call someone that have never been to a mediumship meeting to go just to see to watch the show it has consequences now that they, they, they could harm the effect of the meeting is that what the mentor is saying and they could it could they, they couldn't do the uh, effect of, uh, it could disturb it could disturb that you could come in Mandy. sorry it, no problem it could disturb the meeting it could disturb the person that doesn't know what's going on there, right? Gotcha. You because haven't had a big discussion just coming here. What? You have not had a big discussion just coming here. You haven't or I haven't? You haven't. <laughs> I haven't had a big discussion? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, you at have, home. You, you have not. You have not. Oh, we no, no, made no. you one. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> just, just kidding. Me. I did watch uh, your presentation on the food, though, last week. Yeah, that's pretty good. It actually came in handy the very next day, so I'm glad I listened to it. Oh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> anyway, we're so, talking yeah, about. We were just talking about um, a story about somebody, like a, a mediumship group, where somebody comes in late. So, oh, right. Yeah, that's, that's why we're saying that's actually a little It disturbs <laughs> everyone. That's yeah. why. Did you ever yeah, fight with somebody for your game? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. No, I didn't. Oh, that's good. No, sir. Uh, you guys, need, listen, you guys need an extra person, so. <laughs> well, Such a big group last well, week. Well, yeah. Yeah. But uh, you have to get into the picture. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm not gonna. Yeah. It's fun. Yes, yeah, it is. Anyways, but um, we were talking about that. What does it mean to 
the learned spiritism. That's what we're talking about. But anyways, and then Stanley was talking that uh, Kardec didn't ref uh, refuse the, to invite uh, the skeptic to go to a mediumship meeting. But anyway, yeah, there actually, are implications. He actually says, like, like you shouldn't come because you don't, you're not prepared. Right. But he does say, while waiting, um, you will be able to attend once or twice at the most as a visitor on the condition that you harbor no thought that could offend anyone. <laughs> uh, like that's tough. Like, you know, if you can come, but you just, like, don't think anything, you know. <laughs> that's, I'd be hate. Yeah. Yeah, well, because it is thoughts. affecting. We are affecting others with our thoughts. Yeah. The food. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> we, one day we will, we will see this very clear. But so far we are playing that we don't know. But yeah, the more we read this, it's a scary thing. How we are responsible for for everything that is going on in the planet and it affects affects all of us. We pretend that we don't know we we don't know that right now there's so many people suffering and, and we pretend and we don't do anything. But one day we will we'll plan our lives Everybody will be concerned about this. Concerned of each other, the sufferings <laughs> and struggles. Because we are we are all connected. We just don't don't realize how deep this is. Okay. So who wants? Do you want to say anything about this? And many, if you want to say anything about this, how important, or what does it mean to study spiritism for you? It's, it's many things. It's not just one single thing, I guess. Um, for one, it's, um, I want to use the right word. I don't know what it is. Uh, uh, it, it came that it allowed me to reconnect with God. But um, I don't know if it's the right expression because uh, allowing it's like there was no way I could do it before. And, and there was. But simply it, it was not happening. Uh, my um, my original practice, which was Catholic, it didn't resonate with me anymore. So instead of uh, fighting and you know looking for a way, I for some time I abandoned that relationship. And yeah, through through um, Spiritism. I I started to recover that relationship because that philosophical part that Kardec is uh, talking about is in a similar way to your experience. It just made sense. It, everything, all the questions that had led me to kind of abandon before. Um, they were not a problem anymore with this philosophy. Everything was um, it was just right. It just seemed right. And and then um, just little by little I started experiencing not only intellectual part, which was okay again. So, you know, I didn't have those barriers anymore. But also, also the emotional part. Um, and it's not through the manifestations, because similar to you, again, I don't feel like I have a need for any of that. Uh, I like when he says that 
through the study we get to to be less 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 prejud prejudicial. So that's happened with me as well, and uh, and it's a very good thing for me. So I I don't really need anything to uh, you know to believe that those manifestations happen and, and they are part of uh, life as as anything else. I don't need to make weird explanations for them or anything. Mm -hmm. But again, the most important thing for me has been to you know to reconnect to to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have a, a path um, in my relationship with God. Mm. Yeah, my experience is similar to both of you guys. I already told you that I got someone gave me the book, the Spirit's book, when I was 16 years old. But then I didn't have a call for the mediumistic part, but I was fascinated by it. So I read all the books. I read all the books. First, I read all Kardec's books, and then. Uh, the Spiritist magazine. I didn't read everything, but I read a lot. And also, I read all Andrea Luiz and Emmanuel. And uh, of course, I didn't read all uh, Chico Xavier's book, but that he he channeled. But I read a lot of books. Plus, I was um, looking for confirmation, so I didn't stop there. So I read Bhagavad Gita. I read the Book of the Dead, the Egyptian one, the Tibetan Book of the Dead. I read everything. Mahabharata. I. Do you go to the Course in Miracles? Oh, I went to Course in Miracles. I read the book, not everything, but I read a lot, and uh, which is same thing as Spiritism. He has a little. A little something about spiritism is the um, more like uh, uh, less less religious, which is better for me. And I don't like the the the, the mystical parts of the religious, like rituals and and crystals and those things and incense. And I have to do this, and you have to be in this position, and you have to do that. I don't like that part. I don't like. And uh, I grew up in Catholic church. Which I'm very ungrateful for, because I I learned a beautiful part of the religion, because over there was less show off and more really the interaction and connection with people, because it was a poor community in the in Manaus, so we don't we didn't have the uh, the installations and the like in the U.S. like the beautiful church or or uh, solid Brazil. It was very basic, very simple, very very simple. So it gave me a good, it gave me a good experience. But with the spiritism, there was a connection. But I didn't stop there. I was still reading other things, and it just to give me the confirmation. Or uh, and then I was reading. I, I was always going back to spiritism. Yeah, I like this. It resonates with me. And, and this is for me, but it's not for everybody, you know. One of the things I like about uh, you asked is it important to demystify. Right. Uh, that's you want to go to the next question. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, that's the next question. Go ahead. Uh, to me, that that is very important. Okay. And that's to good. Be able to see uh, that uh, the, the spiritism uh, doctrine or uh, the I'm not going to call it belief, but, but that it's part of nature. You know, that the that the spirit uh, world that we're <laughs> that you contact is part of nature. Mm -hmm. the, the spiritual force mm -hmm. is what science is looking for mm -hmm. and can never find because it's a. Uh, but that is that really demystifies it for me. Mm -hmm. It's a. You turn tables. Of course, it's a force, and they can do that. You know, yeah. and it, it, that that is demystifying it, uh, the relation to me, and I love that. I watched I watched a movie the other day. I was visiting my parents, and my mom put it on about with Kevin Spacey, where he changes bodies with a cat, 
and his spirit and there's a cat body and because he's getting punished because he was like a bad he was like too busy to be with his family and stuff and i was watching i was like really i was like watching like that could never happen like, like I could show you with a doctor. Uh, and, <laughs> you know. Really? Did he do this such movie? Yeah, I mean it's pretty low for Kevin Spacey. You know, he's he's <laughs> actually pretty hurt. He's yeah. a good actor, Kevin Spacey. Well, you know the movie. Or oh yeah, yeah. It was on Netflix or something. I don't know what the name of it, but yeah, he's in a cat body. And, um, like you know, it's 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 a cute movie and stuff. I kind of I, I had to like get past like the doctrine. You know, I was like, this is all wrong. You know, I was like, that could never happen. You ever find these like interesting movies that that relate, right? that relate to like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, and then I I forget where I read it too, because I don't know if it was in the Spiritist book, and they were like talking about um, the afterlife, and it's like, oh, if you want to like some great movies that show like the afterlife, they're like talking about like the movie like What Dreams May Come, they're like that kind of has a good depiction yeah. of it, you, you know? It's like, it, what book was this? I forget what book I wrote. I think oh. it was in the Spiritist book though. And they mentioned some movies. Yeah, I mean it was in the, it was in the it was in like the author's like uh, really? notes. I don't know. No, I don't know where it was. Was spending your life on there? Uh, no, there were Steve. no movies at the time. <laughs> no. There were anything. There was no movies. I don't know where I read that because I I don't know. No, I mean it was no like, the translation. The, no, it was, yeah, maybe the author like not the author. The note of the the translator, the translator or, or notes. Note saying like oh look at right. look at these movies now. Okay. Right. You know, you know. Never heard them. So. I don't know what How the important is to demystify? That's the question. I'm just saying, experience <laughs> takes all the fun out of like switching bodies with a cat because you know it's, right? just, it's just impossible. Exactly. You know? <laughs> but, but, it's, but it's funny because people experience different things throughout their life, and some people make movies, you know, and like even like movies like the Star Wars movies. I think you're wearing a Star Wars short the shirt now. It's like they talk about like the force and like the things, dark force, exactly the dark and the light force, and they talk about yeah. you know that like, you you meditate and you you know it's like it's. It's not spiritism, but it's an aspect of that unknown, you know, realm that we, you know, we always like, you know, yeah. what I mean, we want to understand, but we just don't know it. So yeah. just, even people who don't aren't into spiritism, they still get bits and pieces from it from different people who, you right. know, have experienced those things or, or have, you know, have have encountered those things in their life, like by reading or by, you know, exploring, right. you know, trying to find the truth, you know, of, of, of the nature of the world, and then they're exposed to it, you know, in little bits and pieces, you know, here and there. Even, right, if, right. Even, even if you're watching a Star Wars movie, you can still get you know, a little bit of insight right. from yeah. watching a, sci a completely, you know, fictionous sci-fi movie. Yeah. And we couldn't before. Remember, we were, uh, before you arrived, we were talking about Inquisition. We couldn't talk about this kind of things before. Oh, it was yeah. a no-no. Oh, yeah, well, they were burning at the stake well, for witchcraft and stuff, yeah. We couldn't. But Alan Kardec talks about spiritism predates spirit yeah like, you know like oh right absolutely he's saying like, like it's all part of the same thing as yeah as long as it is. it's all from nature so yeah. it's all been happening for exactly. since the beginning of time but what amazes me is how did he know that this was would last like until today i mean you guys might might know that the spiritism has a lot of enemies and people trying to get something wrong in the spirits in Kardec's literature and trying to destroy the movement. Mm -hmm. A lot of people try. Mm -hmm. But until today, it's 160 years of this book that things that they were talking here is still sciences. Uh, we get it, I love when we get some news that they found something to confirm what is in here. All right. So it's super cool this. So how did Kardec got that, you know? How you got the vision? Yeah. And it's because of the where he comes from. He came with that already with that mission that he would do it. Him and a few people because it's never in in one person's hand, one single person's hand. Oh, yeah, he even says like, oh, you give me too much credit for yeah, uh, oh, right. for doing this. Yeah, this he chapter. said that. He says like I just read kinda, for us. He says I'm not I'm not Plato or just I'm sorry, Descartes, Descartes, Descartes. Descartes. I can't. French. I'm the cough. I'm educated. just joking. He says, I'm not, I'm not one of these guys. He says, these guys came up with their own philosophy. I just like, he, he just collected it. Right. Yeah. Oui. Oui. <laughs> je pense à l'eau, je suis. Oui. Oui. Yeah, yeah. Je pense. Uh -huh. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, I like that, that what he says. It does not belong to me. Thank you, Steve, for reading this. 
You will honor me by attributing that message to me, when in fact it does not belong to me. It was uh, deduced entirely from the teachings of the many illuminated spirits being. I saw, I observed, I coordinated, and I tried to make comprehensible to others what I understood. This is the only part that belongs to me. Big part. Yeah, big part, exactly. And actually, in his uh, postmortem, postmortem, posthumous, posthumous. I never know the I posthumous posthumous work. Thank you. The posthumous work book. Yeah, you can laugh. That's fine. Uh, the posthumous work book. Um, he is saying that he was working too hard. You for ten years, right? He didn't know spiritualism until fifty-one. And I uh, was after 51 years old. And he was working too hard. And then the spirits had told him, like, slow down. You got to take care of your health. You got to rest. Or you're going to die before yeah. the time you're supposed to die. And then he asked the, the spirits, he said, if I die before I finish my mission. And the spirit said, we find somebody else to finish your work. He was 60 when he passed away, right? 61. 61? Yeah. 61 or 69? 61, yeah. So, it, that is very interesting. When he asked, so if I, if I can't finish the mission, somebody else will finish. They will find someone to finish. But like anyway. I said, like when you are a spiritist, you see things from the big picture. You know? <laughs> right. We think we are the, like, you know, the savior. Of the world. I spoke to the wizard this morning. I guess I wasn't feeling very well. I think, gee, maybe he's getting close, you know. Uh -huh. So I said, do, do you think it's possible for me to go on for another 10 years? And the wizard said, only if you're willing to. <laughs> willing is something that the spirits they talk a lot about the willing. The will. The will. The will. Yeah. They talk a lot about this. Okay, so Manny, now it's your turn and it's in Stanley. No, Stanley you already answered, right? Now yeah. Manny. About how important it is to demystify the phenomena and why. Or if it's important at all for you, maybe it's not. Um, I mean it's kind of you know, it's kind of a you know, a broad question, but um I mean, it's just uh, like a lot of a lot of um, a lot of it's based on science. That is, that's what Kardec was was trying to do and trying to, to, to prove and bring to, to the people so they can you know understand it. And um, it doesn't really have necessarily like a strong scientific foundation for you. Like you have all these established sciences, you know, and they all have a foundation for it. And people, like he said on on I forgot exactly how he said it, but um, he said people want to understand without learning about anything. They want to understand everything without doing any kind of studying. And it's like telling a doctor, uh, if I ask, ask the doctor, oh, how do I do this? Or how do I perform a heart surgery? He's like, well, you have to study. You know, it's, it's, it's almost an absurd question when you ask, if you would ask a doctor to tell you how to do that when you haven't done any study. And it's the same thing with spiritism. But I mean, it's just, even, uh, I, I read a study, I read a study, um, a couple of days ago and it was, um, about, um, the health of people who are around nature and around trees and people who are around trees they tend to live longer um so but we don't have any kind of scientific evidence for that so you know it, bringing spirits in it into it it's you know it's, you know trees like every other living thing trees have a life force they give off energy so that could be one of the reasons why you know people are healthier when they live around trees or around nature, things like that, or p even people, they, they, um, they go to a park and they say, well, I like going for a walk, and people are like, why do you like going for a walk for a walk? It makes them feel good. Um, you know, it's like almost like a meditation. Yeah. It's almost like a meditation. Yeah, they you know, created walking. something in Japan that is part of their health. It's accepted. It, it's like they use as a treatment. Uh, it, they call it forest bathing. Oh, I heard of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They create parks and they and they create this uh, habit of going to the park with the family. So the doctors, they tell people, go to the park and <coughs> and uh, bring some food and 
have some fun there in the park and stay there with your family because of that. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they, I thought there was a any a study about that because this is Japan. It's a several, yeah. I mean, something we, serious. Yeah, I mean we know scientifically that you know uh, trees remove toxins from the air. They also re reduce the temperature. You know they call it um like um the urban like a, it's like a heat sink. It absorbs heat in uh, mm -hmm. In neighborhoods that are just concrete, you know, jungles, it, you know, there's like a pockets of heat and it gets a lot hotter there, so it makes it cooler. They, they um, you know, they, they, they obviously um, store carbon, they, they remove toxins from the air, they, you know, keep the soil in place, they help other plants grow, and it's like, we, have, we, know, we know all these things, but as far as any kind of scientific evidence for prolonging the lifespan of, of, of people or, or even animals, mm. you know, that's kind of, oh. you know, but I mean, there have been some studies on it. Mm -hmm. It's just interesting that, yeah. you know, we, we have these little clues and things, you know, staring at us in the face, but, and, but right. we have no right. real explanation for it. And you tell somebody, oh, you live next to trees and you go live on it, they might look like, like right. you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. even in, even in, in jails and stuff, they started putting in like, you know, like, um, like uh, gardens on the roof and like gardens yeah. in, you know, in the areas and people are, they're, they're more calm. They're like, you yeah. know, they're more, you know, yeah. you know, they're, they're less agitated, they're, you know, they're... Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I remember when I uh, I used to go to the jungle just to, like, a, a trip, like a boat trip in the Amazon. I couldn't think, think of anything. Uh, as a child, I was meditating. Now I know I was meditating when I was a child. Like, I didn't want to do anything. I just want to look at the river or just want to look at the forest. Just look. This is before you were 16 and you got your first book? Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Just, just staying in the in a forest or in the jungle or with the nature, mm -hmm. it, it it just takes away all your thoughts and you feel like just staring at it and don't doing anything. It's amazing, it's not, but it's hypnotizing. It's really good. I agree. Any anybody want to say anything about this? Yeah. About the, go ahead, Steve. Well, I was gonna say like, what my experience was, um, spiritism, and then, because I kind of came around and I've been studying and doing all these things, so I was coming to the Spiritist Center for probably like, nearly a year before uh -huh. I saw the first like manifestation <laughs> like uh -huh. happening. Uh huh. Because um, like for our English meetings, we don't really get a chance to see that very much. Um, where where the Hopefully soon. <coughs> hopefully, hopefully. Depends no, on me. Soon. Well, I mean, it might just, it might have just been when I was coming, you know. But um, in the Portuguese meetings, you know, and, the, and especially the meetings that they have, like, they're not open to the public, you know, and they do right. them every day. But um, when I saw my first, we had a, a guest from Brazil come and um, was like, um, and all of a sudden started like giving us messages from the spirit. Right. And, and I and here I am like studying spiritism, like I can explain it, I, you know I can talk about it, and then I see it and I'm like, is this for real? I'm like, is, is this guy serious? You know, <laughs> I was like, uh -huh. and, I, and I was like full of doubt, you know, like my first time. Um, right. And and then like sometimes even coming to these uh, to these study groups, sometimes we have like mediumistic meetings going on in other rooms, mm -hmm. and you can hear the people like screaming and crying and stuff right. <laughs> and like and I it, it, it hit me like maybe two or three months ago I was like I was in the kitchen like cleaning something up uh -huh. and I heard somebody like screaming from a medium mystic room and I was like is this really like the religion that I want to get into <laughs> 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 like is this really well, it's what not I really a religion it's you know like, you know what I mean it's like yeah. is this really what I want to do like, like, right. like is this really where I want to keep going you know it's like because it, so, sometimes it's it's like I'm just, I was just kind of thinking of that when you guys were talking, because I was like, the philosophy part of it kind of grabbed me, and then like sometimes the mysticism, like, it's not mysticism, I'm just saying like, the, the phenomena is like, it's like, alright, enough already, <laughs> you know, but, um, I'm not saying that this is like true or right, I'm just saying like, what well, was my first impression right, right, right. When, I, when I saw it, right. you know, when I hear it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, all sorts. Same way though too. Yeah. Yeah, it's like once you see certain things, it's kind of like, do I really want to open this door? You know, the door's cracked right. already, right? It's like it's you're peeking, you're peeking in, but it's like you want to open the door all the way. Uh huh. You know, it's scary. It's scary, you know. Uh, it's, I've been to a to a, a meeting. I was invited by uh, someone that this person used to charge. It was not a spiritism. Uh, it was uh, mixed with uh, like a like a candomblé, which is the Brazilian. So it was a, a lady wearing white, and it was very mystic kind of meeting. He has all sort of images and things, and we had to pay twenty dollars to get in. And then, okay, so I went with a friend, and uh, and yes, she was channeling for the first, uh, I guess. 20 minutes, 15 minutes, but after that she was not channeling anymore. She was faking? She was faking it. It was part of, well, let's put it this way, that's my my guessing. She was so used to that, the personality of that spirit that she could talk like similar to like what the, 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 the entity used to talk, and but she wasn't. After after a while, she changed it a little bit, and I could see because you see the changes in the eye and the face and the voice and everything. In the beginning, she was channeled, but then later on, she wasn't. But then, because people don't study, they don't know the mechanisms, they don't know how to recognize um, the style of of the message. In the beginning, it was completely different. After 20 minutes, you couldn't tell. But the few details, and then if someone can try to fake it. So if you're not used to, if you're not used to observe, if you're not used to compare, and then you don't know about it. So people refuse to study. People refuse to read the books, and they they don't like when it. Steve already said that here in public. When it's night of manifestation, this house is full of people. And when it's time to study and understand that we are all knowledgeable and we are all source, and there is only five of us here. So it is almost like mm, I want you to let to let me down. You know, just just say whatever, and I will believe you. And people don't like to, that's what I see, that most of us, we don't like to investigate, to understand the phenomena, to understand what's going on. In general in life, I'm not only talking about mediumship or anything like that. I'm talking about everything. Right? We we just want to believe in whatever. Should, you yeah. don't know how it works, you know, but yeah. you certainly believe it. Use the... <laughs> Use Google and ask and get whatever, or Facebook and get information. People don't even <coughs> check. It. I was good friends with somebody who was a channel, and like I was just like really excited about spiritism. I was like telling her, I was like telling her this and that, and she's mm -hmm. like, "Well, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with this." But then I, was, I said, like, because I started reading Andre Louise, and I really liked it, and I read like five Andre Louise books within like a month, <laughs> and and I was I was like telling her, I, I probably had, I was probably on my third or fourth one, and she's like, "Put the books down." You need to let your mind breathe, you know. Like, I was like, I said, well, you know, I mean, I'm breathing. You know? so it's like I'm, I'm getting what I want from this, and it's like I don't know. Well, I, well, actually, I've been meaning to ask this question. It's like you, like I know people who have, you know, these gifts too, but they don't necessarily believe in, like, you know, when you try to talk to them about certain things, like spiritism, like he, like he said, like the, this person he knew was like, I don't agree with spiritism. So, I had trouble kind of understanding how people are sometimes born with gifts or born with, you know, certain abilities and yet they don't understand. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but I get, but it would seem like they would know like more of where their gifts are coming from or they would have some kind of insight for it or, you know what I mean, or kind yeah. of reading about spiritism, they would kind of just make sense for them. So I don't know, I had trouble kind of understanding right. how some people are born with certain gifts yeah. but they really don't care about it, you know what I mean, or mm -hmm. they take it for granted. Or, you I, know I see. What I mean? So and the thing is that the, our level of knowledge is it comes it, it, it's not linear to all the the segments in our personality like for example 
our intellect is one level, our moral is the other level, and, and our uh, religiosity is another level, and our awareness is in another level. So okay. we have, we are not like l learning things, and it's it's linear for everything. So we see people. You're right. We see people with uh, a very um, ostensive mediumship, and they are they know absolutely nothing about. And they had no education, and they are very good at it, and they understand, and they have the knowledge. Are they but they, for money? No, not for money. Some, some people. Yeah, some people. Some people do for money. But I, I, I mean, I've seen in the spiritual center. So people that can't really read, can't read, don't know, and and but they are really good mediums, uh, good good in the sense that they know how to be a good uh, vehicle for uh, uh, the spirits to to talk through them, and I've seen others that are not mediums or anything that go and they just know how to read and write. There is a guy called Sebastian Camargo. He's a uh, author of books. He only uh, he learned how to write and read and went to school only to the first grade. He talks like a scientist. You won't believe when this guy talks. I'm like, what? I got. I have to pause and go back the video because I don't understand. His uh, knowledge is amazing, and. And the spirits, they talk about this because we don't know where we come from and we can tell. Just because we see someone and we see a few aspects of that person's personality, it doesn't mean that we know where they come from. We don't. We don't. So, yes, this is very, like, complicated to learn, to understand, too, because we don't, we don't know everything. But... When they participate in mediumship meetings, uh, they can learn from from each other. There is always a part where they study the the books. A in every mediumship meeting, they have 15 minutes or 45 minutes. I don't know. Every spiritual center, they have their rules where they they learn just to make sure they are at the same page of of knowledge, more or less. Sorry, Steve, I cut you off. I was going to say something. Say it. Okay, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking, too, is like, <laughs> you don't have to be a spiritist to be a medium, you know, to have the gifts. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I understand that. It's just, it's, it's just funny when you see certain people, it's like, you know, I, I know this this woman now, and it's like, I mean, she's a, she's a great lady, but I mean, like, she goes out and she parties and she drinks, but like, she can see, you know, right. you know, spirits supposedly, and she's told me. I that. know someone like this, too. You know what I mean? It's, it's, just, it's a just, medium yeah. and drinks, and I yeah. like. Yeah, smokes pot. And because yeah. I've met, <laughs> I've met <laughs> mediums that they wrong, say. But it's just like. Yeah, I've met know? mediums that they don't study anything, but it is so clear the the connection with the spiritual world that they say, you know, I'm medium. I don't drink, I don't party, I don't, because they can't handle the amount of information. It's just too much. If they, they go to those places, they go crazy. I've met a few. I've met a few that this this is so clear to them, like day and night, and they go like, oh, no, 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 I don't go there. It's too much, mm -hmm. too much. Yes. They see the That's they see the dead people, they see their, you know, how they are, I mean, sufferings, and they go like, no, I'm not going there. I'm not drinking alcohol because as soon as you drink alcohol, there will come someone to suck that energy of the alcohol. Some spirit oh. that was addicted, and they need people to drink. Same thing as the smoking, same thing, same thing. But we still do. I rarely do, but I do. But it's just a little. But why a little? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If it's just a little, then why? But anyways. But I know. I, 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 was, I was going to bring, I don't know if I can bring, a little movie from Brazil. It's like three minutes. It's from the Spiritist Center, Spiritist Group. And it shows the influence of the spirit. I think it 
it's kind of strong. I will send to you, Steve, and you you tell me if it's too strong enough or not. I'm gonna send you without the translation because I'm just only. If you're using me as your moral compass. I I, I, I no. <laughs> you tell me if you know if because my I'm I'm gonna talk on Wednesday, and uh, I'm gonna show that, and I want to translate uh, the the influence the sin, the law of symphony how we vibrate communicates that's how we communicate with the spiritual world right now the what we are feeling right now it, it's it's almost like if we translate to this phrase tell me what you feel and i tell you what kind of spirits you have around you it's basically this because mm -hmm. it is that's the communication well it's kind of like what, what he presented uh, last week on about the fluid is it yeah. says what your, yeah. your thoughts and what you do and your actions yeah. are basically the hands yes. of the spirits yes so yes. just whatever you do your actions is what yes. you're gonna yes and can you imagine in the middle meeting where you open the channel you say okay now we want to communicate with the spirit and if you don't take care of of that part of the 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 theory and the exercises, and if you don't take care of yourself and uh, trying to focus on that activity and knowing the consequences, it could be very dangerous. It could be very dangerous. So you gotta be serious about this. It's not something that you do openly, unless you already come to the incarnation with that well developed such as there are some mediums that they are well prepared to work mm -hmm. everywhere to work everywhere to communicate with the spirits as they please and they don't and they're not, not like it's not disturbing their lives there are mediums like that there are many but the majority, like me, I say, no, no, no. They come and they say, I, I want you to write right now. I'm like, nope. No, you don't. Not allowing. Mm -mm. <laughs> for example. So, for example, I am in a, at a dinner with someone. Sometimes I tell him. I say, there is a spirit here saying this, 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 and this. But it's with him. I don't say this to everyone. Sometimes one day I was giving passes, and this lady, I was giving passes in Brazil. It's different than this one. It was before I go to France. Anyway, I was giving passes in that late in that gentleman, and I see one lady right here. It was a spirit, discarnate, and the guy was incarnate. I was giving passes, and I clearly see her, and I listen when she says full of love. What she said was full of love. She said she was looking to that gentleman I was giving passes and she was here and she goes like, we are so happy that you are here. I was like, whoa, crying. And I was like, oh, I don't want him to see that I was, I was so affected by that. So she disappeared, right? And I finished the passes and I'm like, the because was talking to the, gen the gentleman, the gentleman. Mm -hmm. and I heard he didn't hear anything, and I was like, but then we are we we are trained to not to say those things to the person because we don't know if they're going to be like disturbed, affected, sick by that information. We don't know what level of you know awareness this person is. So I didn't say anything, but then I heard after the passes. I heard him talking, chatting with someone. Oh, this is my first day here at the center. I just got a heart transplant. So I was like, wow, good thing I didn't say anything. Just got a heart transplant. It was not not good to say. And the, so many things happened during the passes but when I was giving. But once I saw a spirit disconnecting from the person and literally jumping he was naked and literally jumping like like when someone push you out of a train and you get out and you just like that I was giving passes and and then the spirit jump but then the person felt 
because the person was very was feeling what happened. It was medium. So when I finished the passes, and then the person saw me outside. It was a man, and he did this. He grabbed my arm and goes like, "You are going to tell me right now what happened." And then I told him. In this case, because then he called me like a part, and it was in secret. And I, and he, I said. He said, I know what happened, but I want you to confirm. I said, yes, a spirit was connected. And, and he said, it was connected and God disconnected. You allowed it to disconnect and you, you were helped by the mentors. And then he said, and I know where I got this. So he went to a house and he saw someone and he was really feeling jealous about that person. Um, got a promotion or something in his job and he was really really jealous by that situation he was so jealous that he couldn't stay in that place he was like oh crazy like and then he left so when he left since that day he said that he was not feeling like himself he was feeling there was a presence but he couldn't say and then he went that same week he went to the spiritual center and during the passes the spirit was disconnected. He was lucky that it just was, and it was disconnected. But anyways, yeah. But anyways, if you are not prepared for that, you see those things, and how are you gonna sleep? Or <laughs> there are people that I, I read some books. <laughs> I read some spiritist books that I couldn't sleep. Well, it was it was long time ago. I was too young and I couldn't sleep. It was kind of scary. Because I knew it was true. I knew it was true. But Andrea Lee's books are not like this. Well, how do you feel about Andrea Lee's books? Yeah, they're not like poltergeist or anything. No. <laughs> they're not like no. <laughs> they're not like poltergeist. <laughs> Before we close this, I want to talk to you about the Act of Faith of Barcelona. That was uh, October 9th, 1861. Kardec sent a few books to Barcelona, Spain, and the bishop, because back then still the everything, all the books and uh, all the books they had to go, especially books that had uh, any kind of spirituality content and spiritual content. So this bishop was giving his approval, and when he saw Kardec's book, the medium's book, the spirit's book, and the, the, the book of the, the biography of Joan of Arc, uh, written by herself, and the medium was Hermance Dufault. She was 14 years old. She, it, it's a wonderful book. It's in, originally in, Fran, in French. I don't know if it's in English but I have it in Portuguese. And all those books, 300 books, and the bishop said, burn it in that main... Uh, um, One of the squares. The I squares, see. the main squares, where the criminals and the people, they were like taken there to be, I don't know. Yeah, like a small castle kind of place. Yeah, so the books were burnt. The act of faith. I want to get uh, the answer of Alan Kardec for this, but I just want to say. Bottom line is that instead of selling 300 books that what Kardec was hoping to sell, like three times more they sold the spirits book and everything. Yeah, so it was great for uh, spiritism. Mm -hmm. And in Barcelona, uh, they had their. Uh, it is from there, from Barcelona, that the, the biggest medium from Spain was born. It's Amalia, Amalia Soler, and uh, she was blind, and she was an amazing medium, amazing, amazing. So I would you basically said that uh, you can burn the books, but you can't burn the ideas, and the fire could... Uh, serve as fuel for those ideas, the fire, that, that fire, um, the books. Yeah. So 
something like that. Well, the spirits prepared him that about all of this would happen. He talks about it in the next chapter with the conversation with the priest. Oh, he does? Oh, he does? Yeah. I he, didn't he, read. Well, he, he mentions it. He just mentions it. Oh, what a coincidence. It's because I didn't read. Yeah, the, the priest is. Oh. The, the, the priest is sort of saying, you know. Um, oh, wow. Uh, talking about, like, tolerance or something like that. He's like, oh, do you think, <laughs> you think, you think the church has been tolerant? <laughs> you know. Oh, sort of, wow. He says, what about the Barcelona? There's, and that's, that's the only reason I know about it. There's a footnote in, in my copy. There's a footnote about, about that story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the so he wrote today, October 9th of 1861, at 10 in the morning, at 10 in the morning, the exp- esplanade of the city of Barcelona in a place where criminals condemned to the ultimate torture are executed, and by the order of the city's bishop, 300 volumes and brochures about spiritism have been burned, including the Spiritist Magazine, the Spiritualist Magazine, a Spirit's Book, the Spirit's Book, the Medium's Book, What is a Spiritism? So this very book we are we are reading right now was born. Fragment of Sonata dedicated by the Spirit of Mozart because Mozart wrote a sonata. And in the Congress of um, the symposium, the, the World's Spiritist Symposium in Valencia, a pianist played the sonata that Mozart wrote through a medium. It's amazing. And a letter from a Catholic concerning spiritism. That was it. A reality of the spirits demonstrated directed writing by on the golden stube those who search. Anyway. Anyways. And the interesting story is that the very same bishop that gave the 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 order to burn the books, he died, and then a few years he died, Kardec was still alive, and he came to talk through a medium. I need to bring this letter that he recognized. The bishop came. The bishop came as a spirit. Yes. And gave uh, and spoke with Kardec as discarnate. And it was very interesting. It's in the Spiritist magazine. Did he apologize, or was he still the same? No, no. He was. He knew what he did, and uh, he was saying that it was true, and it is true that we don't die. Blah blah. blah. Very interesting. We are. We are all slow today. I am uh, so slow today. Yeah, but I'll shut off our webcast. Okay. So go ahead. Next week we'll be starting again chapter three of what yes. is spiritism? Conversation with the priest. Okay. Right. Good. And see us back here. Bye, Facebook. <laughs>